from TIAA Bankfield in Jacksonville, Florida. It's week six of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Well, the humidity is still a factor on this fall afternoon, but no rain in the forecast. That's the good news as you look inside Everbank Stadium here in Jacksonville. Today, we've got a week six matchup for you here as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at this Jaguar team. They're off to a terrific start, unbeaten at 5-0 through the first month and change. And you can hang a lot of this early success on their defense, too. They're the tone setters for these guys, and the entire team feeds off of what they do. Set to go now in week six of the NFL season, and we are underway on EA Sports. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. So here come the Colts to take over for the first time. And leading the way is the number four pick in the draft out of Florida. Here's Anthony Richardson. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two free. Yeah, Richardson will throw to start out here. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. They run with the all-pro from a couple of years ago, Jonathan Taylor. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 16 carries, 68 yards, and a touchdown. He's really been someone special to watch this season. It brings a real unique element to their offense. Even with defenses focusing on him all year, he still sits fourth in the league in yardage. Hard to come up with an answer for a back playing as well as he has been. They've got their work cut out for them in this one as he chases another big week. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Richardson to throw. He'll get this one complete there to Pittman. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 39. That one goes for 24 yards. But I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Running straight ahead, Taylor trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Dewan Smoot with the tackle. You look at this Jaguar defense. They were terrific last week against Buffalo in that victory. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. They ended up getting four sacks in the game, stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire time, made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. And that's what they told us this week, that pressure on the QB is key. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, this defense for the Jaguars, they were terrific last week in the victory over Buffalo. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. 
This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. First and 10, Taylor now. Down right around the 25. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. Out of his hands quickly to Pittman. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with him. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor. His fifth rushing touchdown now on the year. And the Colts will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal. They've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an interception. Pick. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at about the 32. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. They'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time, drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys who are much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not be their thing. Oftentimes, they'll be the ones getting the penalties. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. The numbers on the ground for ETN last week. North of 100 yards, the two scores. And, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line. We talked a lot about him, but offensive line was good, too. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what, he understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. So, Charles, you look at this offense, so what a start to the season. Five wins without a loss. When do you think that you start believing that maybe you're in the midst of something special? Well, you and I both know every head coach never wants that thought to creep into a locker room. But the truth of the matter is, not quite at this time, because if we look at the Steelers in 2020, they're a great example. Remember, they started 11-0, then lost 5-6 and went out in the first round. But I think if you get toward mid-November, the Thanksgiving time frame, and you're still doing this, that's when things start to get real for a ball club. Still leaves him with fourth and short. Any chance you go for it? It's definitely in the back of my mind. In fact, I've discussed it with my staff all week long, different situations that I may want to go for it. Where is the ball in the field? Do I have confidence in my trigger guy? What am I going to do? I'm also talking about my analytics department. What are the odds if I don't get it? What's it going to do to me the rest of the game? Personally, I end up taking all that putting it in my head and making a decision. And you know me, I'm probably going to go for it. Well, I'm sure you want to make an opening drive statement. Yes, I do. Once I have the ball and I've got around the move, I don't want to just give up that easily. 
Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. And we checked the rushing numbers so far here into week six, and the returns have been really good. Now, you're starting to hit that stride middle of the season toward the end. They're certainly hoping they can keep up this production. They are because one of the adages in the NFL is that defense travels and defense endures even in bad weather, right? You know what else does? A good running game. And people want that, especially as you head down the stretch. You may play outdoors in some nasty stuff. You're trying to get to the playoffs. This is the time to get it going. And individually, I don't think you should just think about 1,000 yards either. The bar has to be set higher with this beginning. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him six yards in the first down. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Back to Taylor on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. On the counter, it's Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And that flag accepted. Okay, ready. Now Richardson. He'll get this one to Pittman. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he takes this for about six down inside the 40. That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. Richardson now on second down. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Richard said, working from the gun. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Jack, look at the big man rumble. And he brings this one back. A fumble return for a Jacksonville score. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post-game. Extra point from McManus is good. And we are tied at seven. The scoop and score is an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they dipped a game below 500 following the loss last week. And you get the sense that maybe this team's at a little bit of a crossroads here. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it because what's that old malaprop? If you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> because this crew, they're losing ground fast. They've got to start winning some ball games. And the good teams, they're starting to separate themselves, and these guys are being left behind. On second down, it's Taylor. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Check 
Play action. Now Richardson. Got a man. It's complete to Jelani Woods. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. These two teams all tied after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. Richardson looking to throw this. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. 55 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Richardson. And he's got it. Touchdown, Colts. Jelani Woods, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Colts have taken the lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. He's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. A drive that time of six plays. And a Jelani Woods touchdown catch capped things off. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now Lawrence. He'll get this one complete to Zane Jones. And able to get this one across the 35 before he's brought down. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. Jones with the catch, and we saw that plenty last season. Fitted well with the Jaguars' 2022 free agent frenzy. Over 800 yards, a dependable target for what was suddenly one of the league's most potent passing attacks. First and ten, it's ETN. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. It's great seeing that type of run from ETN. And look, I know we couldn't consider him for rookie of the year last year, but it really was his rookie season since an injury cost him all 2021. And he looked like a rookie of the year. Ninth in the NFL with over 1,100 yards for a surging Jaguars offense. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. 
straight ahead, ETN. Oh, good move. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and 10. That's good tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. Touchdown! Travis ETN, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, wherever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. But right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. 67 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Richardson off the play fake. A short one there, caught by Granson. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there at the moment the ball gets to the receiver, and he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. On third down, here's Richardson. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Devon Hamilton coming in to drop it for a loss of eight, and it also brings up fourth. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, their quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and they will take over first and 10. And now out come the Jags. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive. And they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On second down, ETN once more. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there and a first down. Here's Lawrence. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Fire 
that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you're throwing so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. On second down, ETN once more. Strong running at the 30. And he's taken down inside the 30. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. The line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Lawrence will throw. Hit as he throws there, incomplete. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Lawrence on the sneak, and he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Etienne is not going to get a whole lot, maybe a yard down to the three. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. One more time with Etienne, and he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. Travis Etienne with touchdown number two in the game, and now 11 on the year. And the Jaguars will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. To the touchdown. Cook now to kick this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. Richards into the air on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. There, Richardson back to throw it. Looking middle, and that's complete. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's third and three. Now it's Richardson. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one.
On first down, Richardson. As this complete to Woods. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in week six. We'll get started out in Texas, NRG Stadium in Houston. And it's the Texans who've got the lead in the second quarter. Robert Woods, a touchdown reception. From there, we head over to Hotlanta to check out the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. Terry McLaurin, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's take the trip across the Atlantic, see what's happening over in London. And they couldn't get the job done as they fall to the visiting Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, strong in the victory as his guys run their record to 6-1 and one on the campaign. One of the top performers in that first half was the running back, Travis Etienne. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game, as he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. And this fielded right at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here are the Jaguars to take over on offense. Remember, they're riding that five-game winning streak, and right now in the driver's seat in this ball game as well. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Quick slant caught by Kirk. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And that's going to be incomplete. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And they'll accept that penalty. So the special teams penalty costs some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. Running left, Taylor. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Richardson looking to throw. A short throw pulled in by Woods. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. That'll give him 60 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Operating from the gun, Richardson. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. From the 21, it's second and 10. Richardson out of the shotgun. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. 
And Richardson looks to throw once more. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call, but for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. Now, a quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. Gets past one man. 82 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Here's Zach Moss, who played high school football downstate near Miami. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. On the handoff, Taylor, and he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game. And while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. On third down, here's Taylor. Fights through him. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these big runs that we're seeing, they don't result without everyone else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter has to take place downfield too. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the shotgun, Richardson. And Woods has it complete. Touchdown, Colts. Gelati Woods, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Colts go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Gay is on for the point after. He's got it, and we're all tied at 21. So that one a long 11-play drive. And a Jelani Woods touchdown catch capped things off. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he's up past the 20 of the 22-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. Now ETN to start the drive. And not much doing there, maybe a yard up to the 23. Well, these two teams, they met up way back in the season opener. And it was the visiting Jaguars who won that ball game, so they'll look to make it a clean sweep here at home in Jacksonville. On oh, second down, ETN once more. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. 
From the gun on third down, Lawrence. Now he lets it go deep for Kirk. And oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retakes center stage. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. Richardson shotgun on third down. A short throw pulled in by Woods. And he is stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed ten. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. So a change of possession here on the punt. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Second and seven. Now Lawrence to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Looking to throw Lawrence. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Partner, what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. Landry now on the return. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And it will be first and ten as they take over. Colts taking the field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game, but it falls down to the ground incomplete. Richardson on second and 10. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Oh, 
Operating from the gun. Richardson to the right side, complete to Taylor. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and one. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. to do it. Clock hits zeros. They're not going to get another playoff. Time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. First and ten, it's Richardson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's McKenzie. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give to Taylor. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Here's Taylor again, but he will lose yardage here as they knock him back to the three. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Back to throw. Richardson looking in zone and he's got his man. It's Woods. Touchdown, Indianapolis. The three yard touchdown pass. And the Colts have broken our tie and have taken a fourth quarter lead. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time. That was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around. They're reading coverages early. So now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. Following the touchdown, here's Gay to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. The pressure is on now. They're being shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. And they need their best drive of the game right here. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they'll get this to the 24, and it's second down. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want. And other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Now a deep ball here, hauled in just past the 50. Down the sideline he goes. Touchdown, Jaguars! Zay Jones, 76 yards. And they 
Jaguars are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And oh, he clanks it off the right upright, and it's no good. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. And they've seen their lead nearly extinguished after that last score, but bottom line, they are still on top with the football, and a touchdown on this drive would really put them in position A. First and ten, here's Richardson with it. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. It, yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10, right at the 30. And his throw's going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the cover was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now this throw caught left side. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Boy, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been ripped up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Play action. It's Lawrence. Open man is Kirk complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Well, certainly those are the types of mistakes they're trying to avoid as they attempt to protect this lead late in the game. And let's face it, they're hoping that this one doesn't cost them in a significant way. Yeah, one guy committed a penalty, but now the entire defense has... And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne taking it in from four yards out. And the Jaguars have taken a fourth quarter lead. So that's now 10 touchdowns for him on the year. He's into double figures, and we're not even to the halfway point of the season yet. Parker, doesn't this speak to how well he works with this offensive line? <laughs> they know he doesn't need a giant alley to run through. He just needs a little seam. And he's so good at being patient, waiting for things to develop, and then accelerating when it does appear. Lawrence going to look to throw for it. That's caught. And he is not going to make it. So they won't be able to move this lead up to a touchdown as it'll remain a five-point ball game. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at 
at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Richardson to throw off play action. They'll check this one down to Taylor. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Second and nine from the 44. Now Richardson. Over the middle complete. It's Taylor. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring us to a third and four. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. The throw over the middle taken in, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride, another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage, and that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Back to the air with Richardson. And that, oh, nearly picked off. That would have been a great time for their first interception of the game. Instead, it's second down. Off play action, Richardson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's McKenzie. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. Richardson looking to throw this. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 17-yard line. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Over the middle complete. That's McKenzie. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They come up now on second and two. Now a give to Taylor. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Now first and goal. Richardson. And is it a touchdown? No signal. No, they say incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now. Because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Jags grab it. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. So that simply is a missed opportunity. They're, they're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. 
I don't think next week of practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. Excellent job pushing through tacklers that time to pick up six. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they'll go again with ETN. Oh, nice move. <laughs> now he's loose again. Travis Etienne. Touchdown, Jaguars. Travis Etienne, 59 yards. And the Jaguars add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. But go ahead and give him the hat trick. He's been in the end zone now three times. You, you toss your fedora first, okay? You go ahead and do that. But let's be honest about it. That third one, that's the most spectacular run he's had in the ball game. It's almost as if he's been playing his own game of, can I top this? And each run has been more spectacular than the last. McManus's point after is good, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. So Richardson and the Colts now. Down by 12. A minute 13 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now Richardson. He's got Landry. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. But Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they can afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. His throw incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Here's first and 10. Richardson to throw it. And that one drops to the ground, incomplete. Clock stops here, just inside of 20 seconds, 19 left. Here's Richardson. A short throw pulled in by Woods. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. Here Richardson yet again. And oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. With no timeouts left, that's a dangerous proposition work in the middle of the field. Fortunately for them, that one fell incomplete. Fourth down, desperation time. Where's Richardson? I'm oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Lawrence to a knee, and that will write a finish to this one. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, 
go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them this one is now planted. So for Jacksonville, they remain as hot as anyone, 6-0 and now through the first month and a half. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the New Orleans Saints. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they can't quite seem to turn things around as they fall into 2-4 and four now on the year. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.